recognize a little bit of delirious New York in the core one <laughs> um, sort of syllabus, uh, the idea of this kind of cross section, uh, uh, you know, across Broadway. And you mentioned that you took a tour with the uh, with the students and the faculty yesterday on two double decker buses and had presentations and. So it's nice to have someone who's looking at the city, still not so much from outside, I mean, we're all New Yorkers, but from this kind of intellectual or historical or disciplinary outside of kind of rediscovering the city uh, as an object of, of study of interest. And so what has changed? What is the same? Or, or what are you trying to extract uh, from New York again, let's say, in terms of what the students are going to look for in this first semester? As uh, I always, I always quote Kubler because I, I'm a great fan, and he he has the uh, he came out with this uh, uh, idea of history as something that can be in permanent change, and it's always it always depends on our contemporary perspective. So definitely, New York always changes because it's through our eyes that we are looking at it. And, uh, and that's why I, I thought it was really powerful to start um, an architectural uh, master's program looking at the close context and looking at uh, the city uh, from the architectural perspective. So, uh, of course, we start from New York. That's an obvious uh, reference. And, uh, but it's been already 40 years yeah. since the book was published, right? So we cannot deny that our perspective has a shift and change. I'm, I'm probably sure that Rem Kulhas would agree with that. The way that we're looking at uh, to our um, um, New York, to our contemporary New York, is that we're understanding it as a fragmented reality not that much as a set of buildings on a grid, but rather as a set of fragments that are interconnected, thanks to um, many reasons, but among others, uh, the new digital landscape that allow us to have uh, um, an, an easier access to indoor spaces and private spaces that we lack before. So how the public space is being redefined uh, through that, um, it's one of the key questions that I'm asking to the students. So it's a research-based project. So we're looking to our contemporary reality and try to understand how the digital platforms and our digital landscape, it's redefining the way we understand private public, we understand collective uh, individual, and we understand the public and the domestic. What's interesting is also, of course, our tools have evolved, and so I think the students are invited to use digital tools and drawing techniques and videos and new ways of making models, etc., to make those fragments and those relationships visible. I, there's a real right you have you're setting up a whole agenda for kind of representation or to reclaim let's say, that project? It's or? definitely the most important is uh, the point of view of the student, uh, his or uh, her critical position towards something more than the information itself. Um, the information, it's more accessible than ever. It's not that uh, it's not difficult to find. Of course, it demands an effort, but it's uh, also sh easy to share. So I... I ask the students to share as much as they can because what value is uh, not the information per se, but rather how they do uh, understand it and build on it.